Hello and welcome back G-Man in the Studio Lab. Today I will give you an introductory series of videos covering modular synthesis. This course is for anyone who's been mildly curious about modular synthesizers. Maybe you've seen your favorite musician like Johnny Greenwood using a modular synthesizer at a show and always wondered, what does all this stuff do? I'm here to demystify it for you. Today we'll start with the basics. What is a typical synthesis setup? What are the kinds of modules in that setup? What will we learn moving forward? Usually we think of synthesis like this little diagram here. Function blocks are connected by lines. This is a typical patch. A patch because the functional blocks represent different modules in that system. And the connecting lines will become our patch cords between those modules. The beginning of this patch starts on the right, where audio comes from, and usually moves towards the left, where the basic audio gets altered in some way. But later you'll see it doesn't always have to go from left to right. Our first function block is an oscillator. It's responsible for generating raw sound or waveforms. When you patch the output, it should be doing something like this. The simplest oscillator doesn't have a way to control the frequency. It's simply a drone. While drones have their uses, we'll be looking at VCOs, or Voltage Controlled Oscillators. That only means we can change the frequency or other parameters using another device. We'll be exploring a few different VCOs in the next video. The next block is a filter. Filters can remove sections of the raw sound. If you've ever used an equalizer on a stereo system, then you have actually already used filters before. Plugging the VCO to the filter input and listening to the output, it should be doing something like this. Some filters can remove the highs, sometimes the lows, or possibly remove the highs and lows, leaving only the mids. Again, we are interested in VCFs, or you guessed it, voltage controlled filters. The sound can be modified using another device. Filters will be covered in the third video. The next block is an amplifier. If you've ever used a volume control on a stereo system, it is the same thing. We can take any input signal, especially audio, and turn the amplitude up or down. This amplifier has a bias control, so when I plug the VCO to the audio input and listen to the output, I can hear the audio getting louder or quieter. We will once again be interested in using another device to help us turn the audio up or down automatically. So a voltage controlled amplifier, or VCA, will help us achieve that. There's a little saying you can never have enough VCAs. Once you discover what VCAs can really do and how useful they are, you'll understand why. VCOs, VCFs, and VCAs are all shown at the top of the chart. That's because they are in the audio path. Oscillators generate the sound, filters can remove some frequency dependent portions of the sound, and amplifiers can change the loudness of the sound. The patches connecting audio path modules are usually indicated by horizontal lines. Down below on the chart we see modulators. While modulators can have several different types, their purpose is generally the same, to modulate other functional blocks of the audio path. Modulators are shown below because they are not usually within the audio path itself. Modulators don't usually produce audio, but rather control voltages, also known as CVs. Control voltages are usually below the audio range and cannot be heard. That's why CVs are usually shown in the chart as vertical lines. As you can see, modulators themselves may or may not be controlled by other incoming CVs. We'll see what some typical modulator types are in the fifth video, but right off we'll address the elephant in the room right now. The keyboard. The keyboard may be another synthesizer, for example the Roland SH-101, or it might be a controller like the Arteria Keystep Pro. Just know that it will only be useful to us if it can output its pitch and gate CVs. We can expect the oscillator will want the pitch CV, so we can control the pitch of the oscillator. The gate CV may or may not be needed for modulators. 
At the end of the chain, we see effects, and anyone that has ever used a guitar pedal knows about these. Effects will color your sound with reverb, delay, chorus, phasers, and who knows what else. In some cases, we can literally use a guitar pedal here. The very last module in the audio path is our output module. We need the output module to take our modular audio signals and make them play nice with line level audio devices of the outside world, like external mixers, computer audio interfaces, powered monitors, and combo amps. Such output modules are, for example, IntelliGel IO, Pittsburgh Modular Outs, and Befeco Output. That's all I have for today. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe.